Welcome to my latest YouTube video. Today I'm going to talk about the serenity prayer. Many of you know it from Alcoholics Anonymous or other 12-step recovery groups. It is probably its most famous saying, its most famous prayer, um, and it dates back to around 1941 when AA um, began to use um, what Dr. Reinhold Niebuhr, and, and excuse me for my mispronunciation, uh, what uh, Dr. Niebuhr wrote back in the 1930s. Its brilliance is in its simplicity. Its usefulness is in its application. There is no secret why this short prayer is such a profoundly important, life-changing tool to so many people, whether they're recovering addicts or they're uh, recovering SLDs, they have self-love deficit disorder, or they just need help to discern what they can and cannot do and to, and to know the bounds of their limitations. So what I want to do today is I want to talk about how the serenity prayer is tied into self-love recovery, which is my method, which I sometimes call the codependency cure. It is my method and how to resolve or cure self-love deficit disorder. The, the serenity prayer is as follows. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. The three important words to focus on is serenity, courage, and wisdom. These three elements in this prayer are incredibly important to the to this person who is building self-love abundance, to the person who has self-love deficit disorder, the codependent, um, who often is in a narcissistically abusive relationship. They are the victims of the abuse. They are powerless or they feel powerless to stop the abuse. They are powerless to end the relationship or they believe they're powerless. They feel responsible for elements of their mistreatment, abuse, or neglect, when in fact they're really not, and, and often that's because of gaslighting. The serenity prayer is necessary for my clients to understand exactly what is in their domain of control. If my clients cannot delineate between what they can and cannot do, and make decisions based upon a false sense of hope, a distorted sense of, of expectation, um, or thought processes that were systematically manipulated on purpose by a narcissist to make the SLD, the person who's self-love deficient, to believe that they neither have the power, the ability, or the resources to change any of the problems in their life. Before I go into that first element, I want to focus on the word serenity. And I believe this word alone is perhaps the most important part of the serenity prayer. So I imagine serenity as um, my peaceful place, um, a, a place where I am calm, I am relaxed, I am without fear, I am without anxiety. It's a place where I can think clearly and my emotions are not jumbled. So for me, that's sitting on a boat fishing on a summer day um, with, uh, I don't even need to be catching a fish and I am calm and at peace. And in that moment, any problem that I have, I am going to be able to think through it and use 100% of my psychological abilities and resources to come up with a resolution. Now, in reality, um, <laughs> I very rarely am fishing in this peaceful, beautiful, wonderful lake. Um, and that serenity um, cannot happen just because um, I want it to happen. So, it's incumbent upon SLDs who are striving towards self-love abundance is to create moments in their life, uh, places in their life, times in their life where they can achieve some semblance of serenity. 
So it's not that I can get in the car and drive up to Canada, <laughs> where the last time I felt that form of serenity, which really was about a 12 hour drive, and find that peace of mind and then make my decisions. No, I have to find that place of peacefulness, calmness, relaxation in my world that is not necessarily always calm, peaceful, and relaxed. Without that feeling of serenity, my choices and decisions are going to be compromised. If you are self-love deficient, you don't live in a, a world that feels serene. In fact, it is the opposite. It is a cacophonous um, jumble of loud noises and, and actions and unexpected um, grinding of events and responsibilities. Um, and you are trying to solve problems that by the very nature of your relationships are unsolvable. Whether you've been gaslit, you've been manipulated, or because of your attachment trauma, uh, that goes all the way back to your childhood, you feel that your world has never been peaceful enough for you to figure out a way to change it. To make life-changing decisions, which is often the case in, in the codependency cure or self-love recovery, you have to slow down your world around you. You have to find a place of peacefulness and relaxation so you can sort through your circumstances. Now, I promise you, your narcissist, the ones that are, um, that are attached to you or made you attached to them, will do everything and anything to make the attainment of serenity impossible. As long as you are feeling trapped, anxious, and powerless, your ability to make profoundly healthy um, decisions, for example, setting a boundary, um, calling the police, protecting your children, filing for a divorce, um, getting a restraining order, um, it's going to be so very difficult to come to that conclusion because your outside world is a mess your inside world is a mess and a decision to change something, to go against the, um, the flow, to um, challenge angry, manipulative, narcissistic people um, with all that noise is going to be overwhelming and you're just gonna say, no way. The second part of the serenity prayer, <clears throat> courage to change the things I can courage. SLDs don't have courage. If you are a codependent or someone who's self-love deficient, your courage has been surgically removed from your heart, your mind, your, your, yourself early on because every moment, every time you try to be brave and courageous and stand up for yourself to disagree with a narcissist, to show sadness or disappointment, you were hammered, you were hurt, you were um, consequenced. So an SLD that grows up in an early childhood environment where they um, express their independence, which is actually a normal developmental phase for children. I can, I'll never forget when my son at four years old, and, and it was so cute, he stood up to me and his little arms just, I don't have to listen to you. You're not my boss. <laughs> I, I remembered how cute that was, and I quickly corrected him. And I said, well, well, my son, you do have to listen to me, and I kind of am your boss. So go in and clean your room, and it's time to take a nap. So using that as an example, he was not punished for being brave and disagreeing with me. I did not shame him. But the SLD who would do that with a narcissist, whether it was during their childhood or in their adulthood, they are beaten up, they are punished, they are made to feel guilty or ashamed for standing up for themselves. More often than not, that moment of, of um, courage is twisted into a moment of bad judgment 
where not only the narcissist might try to um, instill or implant the, the gaslit light, the gaslighting, the gaslit narrative, you're not being courageous. You're being stupid. You're being selfish. Um, you're being narcissistic. So if the message is early on that when you stand up for yourself and take a risk, um, the consequence is more severe than the benefit, you learn that cur courage doesn't pay off. But for the self-loving person who wants so desperately to rid themselves of their self-love deficient codependent past, the, the development or the acquisition of fundamental emotional courage is more important than almost anything that I do with my clients. To be courage, to be courageous, and Brene Brown does brilliant talks about this on TED in her books about about uh, the importance of um, um, courage. But to be courage, to be courage, <laughs> to be courageous means you have a semblance of self-love, self-respect, and self-care. That you have enough integrity to risk a consequence to stand up for what you believe. For my self-love deficient clients, it takes a lot of work to get past all of the events that happened to them. Hundreds, thousands, um, that taught them that courage doesn't pay and it often um, creates worse situation. Another reason for why I believe the courage element of serenity prayer is so important is because without courage, you are not going to be able to see into the future. And SLD doesn't see into the future because they have no hope. Their hope has been squashed. It's been snuffed out. Every time they have uh, had the courage to try to change themselves or perhaps other people, they have um, been a victim of immediate um, consequences. So the courage to change the things I can, that is a state of mind, um, a state of emotional health where you believe that you are what I would call, what I say, efficacious enough to know that you have the ability, the emotional, intellectual ability, the support systems, family, friends, um, the spiritual connections, um, uh, to know that you're going to be safe despite the dangers inherent of this decision of yours. The courage to, ch to, to change the things that I can the word the can is important to talk about. Not everything can be changed. Courage to change the things that you can't change is courage that's going to end up disappointing. How do we know what a person can or cannot change? And that goes into the third part of the serenity prayer and the wisdom to know the difference. So what is wisdom? <laughs> wisdom simply is a person's self-esteem based belief system that is derived from learning. As, as my dad used to say, uh, he graduated from the school of hard knocks. I'm not so sure he did, but he certainly believed he did. But if many of us have been in the school of hard knocks, in other words, we have learned our most important lessons by our mistakes. And when you learn from your mistakes and you change your life accordingly, you develop wisdom. Wisdom comes to folks who um, grow and evolve and learn independent of whether they do everything right or wrong. Wisdom does not come from a book. It doesn't come from a YouTube video. It comes from the conglomeration of a life, life experiences in which you have courage to change the things that you can and 
this wisdom, this set of beliefs, this set of experiences, this set of memories that have proven to you what is true, what is not true, what can and what cannot happen, what to believe, what not to believe. Wisdom just is not given to you. It is derived from a life that's lived with courage in which there is enough serenity in it where you can make your decisions based upon what is good for you, not for the other person who's trying to hold you down or manipulate you. People call me wise, not a wise guy. I've been called that a few times, but people call me wise. And, and so if I was to answer, uh, assuming that's true, if I were to say, so where does my wisdom come from? It comes from my undying commitment to learn from mistakes, to be a better person, to listen to what others have to teach and tell me, and to make the very best of my life independent of my challenges. In conclusion, the serenity prayer is a staple to any person working in self-love recovery. Any person who is self-love deficient, who is a codependent, who wants to extract themselves from these magnetically um, uh, energized relationships with narcissists, who wants to learn how to heal the trauma that is responsible for their SLDD, the shame, the loneliness, and the addiction to the narcissist. I mean, we're talking about really hard stuff. Self-love recovery is an extremely difficult treatment process. And if you're going to come to me or any other practitioner um, who does, who is trained in this program, and you're going to say, I want to change my life. The serenity prayer is going to be your friend. It's going to help be that compass that is going to guide you when all is dark, when there are clouds around you and the storms and the thunder is so loud that you can't concentrate. Having serenity in your life, peace and tranquility enough to be courageous, to determine what you can and can't do, and the wisdom and the experience to know that what works or doesn't work. That gets you through every stage of my self-love recovery program. And there's 10 of them. And with that, I want to leave you with, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Bye-bye.